So a former United States Attorney General just said that Donald Trump likely will be criminally charged. Let's talk about that. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, I think every once in a while, we're entitled to a, a good news story, right? Here's one. This from Salon. Headline, former U.S. Attorney General, Justice Department will probably criminally charge Donald Trump. And that article begins, Donald Trump is likely to be criminally charged by the Department of Justice for his failed attempt to subvert the 2020 presidential election, former Attorney General Eric Holder said on Thursday. Quote, My guess is that by the end of this process, you're going to see indictments involving high-level people in the White House. You're going to see indictments against people outside the White House who were advising them with regard to the attempt to steal the election, Holder said in an interview on Sirius XM's The Black Eagle. Quote, And I think ultimately you're probably going to see the president, former president of the United States, indicted as well, Holder added. And you know, friends, lest we forget, do you know who appointed Eric Holder as a judge back in the 1980s? President Ronald Reagan. Now, as I recall, lots of Republican politicians praise everything Ronald Reagan did. Well, I will say Ronald Reagan made an excellent choice nominating Eric Holder to be a judge in the courts of Washington, D.C. So if, well, let me say when, Donald Trump is indicted, what are the most likely charges? Well, we can start with obstructing an official proceeding and conspiracy to commit offenses against or defraud the United States. Why can we start with those two? Because a federal judge already ruled by a preponderance of the evidence that Donald Trump committed those two federal felonies. Judge David Carter in California ruled by 51% of the evidence, more likely than not, a preponderance, which, as I've mentioned before, is a higher evidentiary burden than in, is necessary to arrest or indict somebody. That's just probable cause. Judge Carter ruled that Donald Trump committed those two crimes. Obstruction of an official proceeding, the certification of Joe Biden's win, and conspiracy to commit offenses against or defraud the United States. Another likely charge is inciting an insurrection, right? We saw the evidence with our own eyes. That charge will be well supported by the evidence. And then there's the granddaddy of all crimes against the nation, treason. Here's how the federal criminal code defines the crime of treason. Whoever, owing allegiance to the United States, levies war against them the United States, is guilty of treason. So the next logical question is, what constitutes levying war against the government, against the United States? Well, in our nation's history, there haven't been that many treason cases prosecuted, but we can actually look to the English tradition, specifically the Treason Act of 1351 for what is a pretty straightforward definition of what constitutes levying war. Levying war means the assembly of armed people to overthrow the government or to resist its laws. Okay, friends, so let's break that down. First, an assembly of armed people. Well, Donald Trump was specifically briefed before he gave his speech on January 6th, that members of the crowd were armed with rifles, with pistols, 
with other deadly and dangerous weapons. And Donald Trump said, what? I don't care. They're not here to hurt me. Take down the metal detectors. So an assembly of armed people? Check. And it was an assembly of armed people to do what? Well, Donald Trump said, take down the metal detectors. They're not here to hurt me. And then we can all march to the Capitol. Why? To stop the peaceful transition of power. In other words, to overthrow the government. Check. But treason can be committed in another way, either to overthrow the government or to resist its laws. Donald Trump told his angry supporters who he knew were armed and he facilitated them being armed by saying, take down the metal detectors and then we can all march to the Capitol. He told them to do what? To stop the certification of Joe Biden's win. In other words, to resist the laws of the United States, the Electoral Count Act. Check. What Donald Trump did on and around January 6th is commit the crime of treason. And I stand proudly with Eric Holder in his opinion that Donald Trump likely will, I'll even drop the likely, will be indicted for his crimes against the United States. Because justice matters. Friends, hold on tight. Don't give up. Don't despair because that's precisely what Trump and company want you to do. We're going to get there. As always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.